this is uh, what the calibration target looks like and uh, SICK carries two calibration targets one for a smaller field of view one for a bigger field of view with uh, the sawtooth on one side and the flat side on the other side you can uh, make your own calibration targets as well using the CAD drawings that are provided in the reference manual this is uh, the geometry that is being supported by the coordinator software for the calibration it's called the reverse ordinary geometry whereby the laser is uh, vertically looking down whereas the camera has been placed in an angle and the motion direction is as shown on the screen in order to do the calibration you must make sure that your parameter file has got a trig mode of zero as well as the enable of zero because you cannot have the sensor enable or the encoder mode enable when you are trying to do the calibration once you have done your calib parameter file configuration and you know that you are getting a decent image go ahead and save that parameter file in this case I will go ahead and save my parameter file on the desktop make sure you disconnect from the Ranger Studio because the Ranger Studio accesses the camera and when you are going to be using the coordinator software that's going to be accessing the camera as well you cannot have both of them that access the camera at the same time so you must disconnect from the Ranger Studio before you go ahead and start up the coordinator software once you start the coordinator software it goes into a series of steps a very straightforward user interface you start by attaching the parameter file that you used you provide uh, the type of camera you're using in this case we are using an Ethernet camera so we will pro specify the IP address and click on next we need to specify the dimensions of the sawtooth on the calibration target and if you have a SICK calibration target the dimensions should be imprinted on the target itself the target I'm using is 10 millimeter high uh, as far as the sawtooth dimension is concerned and the width is 20 millimeter once I have those configured I will click on next this calibration ROI is the area which you are interested in uh, calibrating and uh, by default the calibration ROI is uh, picked up or extracted from the parameter file you specified so in my parameter file I had a start column of uh, 0 and I was using all the 1536 columns my start row was 180 and the number of rows I'm, I was using is 160 so that's what's being specified as in yellow uh, but I can actually cut down this region of interest or the calibration ROI especially since uh, I know that uh, I'm using all the columns and a lot of my columns on the side might be on the conveyor and not on the part I can cut down my uh, calibration ROI so now what is represented by the white is what basically is from my parameter file and what is yellow is what I have chosen to calibrate uh, however note that the calibration is done on the entire sensor imager because the values are merely extrapolated over the entire imager I can also go ahead and place uh, the flat side of my calibration target and you might be able to see it at the bottom of the screen over there so you see the change on the bottom of that ROI and I would be interested in making sure that that area is included in my calibration so uh, I'm satisfied with my calibration region for now and I will go ahead and click on next this is where the actual calibration is done now so uh, I need to do two modes of calibration first I need to make sure that the flat side is presented and uh, you will see the bins being filled up as with the measurement data in uh, on the sensor display screen and when I present the sawtooth portion of it you will see the world display being filled up and uh, the measurements that are being shown over here uh, also display what the estimated error that might come back with so I will go ahead and press start over here and start my calibration process and you will see uh, the values being filled up over here depending on which uh, which side I show up first I don't have to go in any order I can start with the sawtooth side first and then with the fly flat side or vice versa I don't even need to present this uh, uh, in a very stable manner when I'm presenting my calibration target I can just move it around with my hands uh, as as best as I could and the sensor will help me uh, in compensating for those values so I will go ahead and press start
as soon as uh, I finish the the flat side you can kind of see that all the bins are being filled up with some values those values basically are indicating the estimated error in each of those uh, respective bin now I can use the sawtooth, sawtooth side of the calibration target to calibrate the wall coordinates so I will go ahead and do that now So that uh, completes uh, the other part of my calibration with the sawtooth target and then you see those uh, estimated uh, errors in each of those respective bins. If I'm not happy with these values I can go ahead and reset and start back again. Uh, otherwise I can just click on finish and the system will uh, calibrate that for me, uh, create a lookup table for me and then I can click on next. I should uh, have specified uh, that this error threshold that has been specified here it's a purely a uh, visu visualization tool so I can increase that value then what it would do is anything that's higher than 0.1 millimeter uh, error it would basically highlight them in red over here so it's a purely visualization that's to tool that's available for you to use over here if I choose not to use this then best values are shown in white, good enough values are shown in uh, uh, light gray uh, and the worst values are shown in darker gray so the, the be better the results the lighter color they are and they are just shown in grayscale mode basically. The, this particular step that has to do with adjusting the x-axis that would be very useful if your uh, reference level was slanted then you could go ahead and adjust the x-axis by clicking on adjust a flat surface underneath the laser line and once you have that the the whole plane you can see it kind of adjusts itself because my surface is also slanted and uh, once that's done go ahead and press set and the adjustment basically would be done for you once you're done with that you can click on next you have now uh, successfully created a lookup table, a calibration table for your camera. You can either upload it to the camera flash or you can even save it to file. I will go ahead and uh, upload it to the camera flash. I would also recommend uh, saving this uh, to a file and once you're done with this you can simply exit the coordinator software. Once uh, you're done in loading up the loot parameter file into the Ranger camera you can open up the Ranger Studio and you can go ahead and uh, put a check mark here on the show data calibrated so make sure there is a check mark over here and then you can go ahead and connect to your camera um, notice the value that shows up at the bottom so at the top of the soft bar it shows up to be 112 millimeter whereas uh, at the bottom over here on the tray it shows up to be about 80 millimeter for so which sounds about to be the right so these values will show you the millimeter values and obviously when you go and uh, start up your icon API and try to access the data that comes out from the Ranger camera that will also be in millimeter values now.